I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me fully in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now we are talking about his peace. And God wants you in peace. And I began to talk to you on Monday. Anything that is disrupting your peace, it's time to take a critical look at it and make up your mind what to do with it. You make up your mind. Your peace is so valuable to God. So if you are not enjoying it, it's like God have lied. If you are not enjoying it, anything that is causing you not to enjoy that peace that Jesus gave to you, he let go of his peace so that you will have peace. So anything that is causing you not to enjoy that peace. You need to take a critical look at it and make up your mind. Listen, 2023, you've got to enjoy the peace of God like like it is. (laughs) Every bit of it. You've got to enjoy the peace of God financially. You've got to enjoy the peace of God maritally. You've got to, you've got to enjoy, don't patch Don't accept nonsense. No, don't. You are too valuable to accept nonsense. And that's what I've been trying to tell you since Monday. You are too valuable to accept nonsense. And you see, because sometimes, you know, when, when, when when you speak to people, now, I'm just being dragged into a relationship, a relationship. And you feel, you know, or, or some people just have this entitlement mentality, you know, that whatever, eh, you're my wife, so you better, that is who I am. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes people speak so carelessly and, and, and you sit down there and say, well, what do I do? You have a choice to accept nonsense or not to accept nonsense. You have a choice. You do have a choice. And some people are there suffering and they are quiet. Nobody to talk to. They don't want to talk to anybody. Why? Why don't you want to talk to anybody? And I don't want people to. Now somebody is maltreating you and you are still saying, I don't want people to see him that way. That is the height of manipulation. A manipulation has been done on you, praise God. I'm telling you, you have been manipulated. You have been boxed up. And I'll tell you one truth. That is not godly. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not godly. You've entered into the domain of the devil. That's where you are, because witchcraft is being practiced on you. So, you see, if you don't free yourself from that witchcraft, then soon the result, because see, the thief doesn't come but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I'm not saying your husband or your wife is a witch, but witchcraft activity is going on, is a thing of the spirit. So if you stay in that environment long enough, sickness is going to come in. And then, you know, the next thing, death is going to come in. And then everybody will begin to wonder, what happened to her? What happened to him? I'll tell you what happened to them. They accepted nonsense. See, especially if you're a believer. Now, unbelievers can do whatever they like. That's their business. God loves them. But you see, why I say they can do whatever they like? Because they don't have any force of control 
in their life. But for a believer, the Holy Spirit have been given to you as your pullback, as your control. Now, if it is not working in a person's life, then the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, is the Holy Spirit there in the first place? And if the Holy Spirit is not there, then you need to really ask yourself a lot of questions and decide if you still want to be under that bondage or not. Now, the, the, the church, God has given the church so much authority that the church doesn't even know how to function in it. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. A sister comes and says, my husband is, is, is maltreating me, my husband. And then what does the church say? Um, let us pray that God will change his heart. Let us pray that God will touch his heart. Nah. Nah. <laughs> the reason they take that attitude is because no one is stepping up to take responsibility in that situation. No one wants to put that, that load on his shoulder. And, and the truth is, because the church is not praying. When issues like that come up, the first thing you do is to pray. You know what? Let's pray about this matter. And then God will give us direction on what to do. It's as simple as that. But because the church doesn't want to bear the responsibility, so they don't even pray. They say, we'll be praying for you, but I bet you they are not praying. Mentioning it in prayer doesn't mean you have prayed. A sister comes to you and says, this is what I'm suffering. And they say, ah, sister, I didn't know it is well. God will solve it. Eh? Just go back home. We are praying for you. Brothers and sisters, if you're too late, in 24 hours, you should have an answer for that sister. You should have an answer. And God is not going to be telling her and you what the man should do or vice versa if it's the man that comes to complain. No, God is going to tell the person what to do. So he begins to give you wisdom. Do this, do this, do this. Do. Now, the wisdom is not always to pack your things and leave that place. No, no, no. no. Understand. But he will begin to give you wisdom on what you should do. And when God begins to speak to you, don't start thinking, but I'm not the problem. He's the problem. I'm not the problem. She's the problem. So God should tell her how you came to him. He will speak to you. See that now? And sometimes we get people together, oh, start behaving well. Okay, I have heard I will behave well. Now, when you find out there are cases where both, people, both parties are not sincere people, they are not honest. When they, you know, you know, as a pastor, when people come to you and they, are to can, they, are, they want you to cancel them, and then they don't tell you the whole truth. They tell you what they want you to believe concerning them. And you know what, God, that's because sometimes we see those things and, and you laugh in your heart. And because because that's exactly what God's gonna God's gonna give you counsel based on what you want to hear. And sometimes He'll give you counsel in parables. Go sort it out yourself. Since you don't want to be truthful, you will leave that place and you will know that that counsel will not work. So your problem continues. But the day you realize that, look, I've got to be truthful, then you will get truth for an answer. Because sometimes, you know, you know, we especially. Um, sometimes when you, when you have insight into things and someone is talking and you know the person is telling a lie but the person wants counseling from you now there's one thing about giving counsel there's another thing about taking responsibility or being committed to that person See, now when someone comes and says I, I want you to give me counsel on this and you're listening and then you know this person is telling a lie you said okay are you done? yeah I'm done okay this is my counsel go home and pray God will visit you. Thank you, sir. Any other thing? No, go and pray. Now, if, if the person wants you to make a commitment towards them, now that's where you can, I can't make this commitment because this is where you're telling a lie. This is where you're not being truth about this whole situation. And so I can't make a commitment with on this. You understand now? Because sometimes you find people are not sincere. But then, when you find genuine, godly people, and because you know from the wisdom you receive from the Lord. 
I said 24 hours is enough to give a, a clear answer. This is what you should do. Because we have a responsibility as God's children to see to it that we enjoy the peace that he has given to us. We enjoy that peace. We have a responsibility to enjoy it. And you know, Jesus clearly said, stated that if your right hand is offending you, cut it off. When it's established that the offense, not us, what the thing that is causing my my taking my peace away is my right hand. When it's established that that's what it is, you have a choice to stay with it and lose your peace or cut it off. Why would Jesus tell us to cut off the right hand? Because if you cut it in his name, he will heal it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he will heal it. If you cut it by his instruction, he will heal it. He's not going to leave it open. He's not going to leave your hand with you. He's not going to leave you without one hand. With, you know, without one. I cut off my hand because I read in the scripture. Now, now you don't just wake up and carry something saw and cut off your hand. You go before him and say, Lord, I have identified the problem. I think my right hand is the problem. Lord, I want you to tell me what to do with it. Then you wait for him to speak. You see, wait for him. How long while? You don't have to wait so long. He's going to speak because he's not going to watch you suffer. The most pro the tr problem most times is he's speaking, but people are not listening or they are not willing to do what he says. Yeah. Because sometimes, you, you're, you're, for example, you're in an abusive relationship and, and God says, get out of that relationship. Now, the fact, maybe you're even married. The fact that God tells you to get out of that marriage or the fact that God tells you to leave that place doesn't mean he's saying go divorce the person. You have to show faith with the Lord then allow him fix things. You see that now? If he tells you leave, just obey him, leave. Then maybe he just ask, okay, how do I leave? But then make up your mind to obey him and allow him to fix it. You know, Abraham, <laughs> Abraham, you know the whole story about Abraham and Hagar and Sarah and Ishmael. Now, Sarah initiated it, Abraham accepted it. Hagar, Hagar got pregnant and she gave birth to Ishmael. And at some point, Sarah couldn't handle the situation anymore. So she began to maltreat Hagar. And Hagar left. And God commanded her to go back. God said, go back and submit. And she did. And later on, Sarah approached Abraham and said, you've got to send this woman and her child away. And Abraham said, no, I can't because it's my responsibility. I, I caused this to happen. She wouldn't have been in this situation if not for me. So I want to take full responsibility. And he went before the Lord and the Lord says, do what your wife has said. Let her go. Now, it's amazing that Abraham, who was fighting for her to stay because he cared for her. When God told him, let her go, Abraham had over 400 servants in his house, raised in his house. And he told her guy to go with Ishmael, her son, and give them a piece of meal and says, go. Just let them go. No servants to go with them. Now, you want to wonder the difference between this man who was protecting her interest and this man who's looking or who's appearing ruthless. It's because that's how God commanded him to let her go. God said, let her go with nothing. Just let her go. Was God wicked to her guy? No, because the God who commanded him to let her go has already gone ahead of her and prepared a way for her. You understand? See, that's why he, it's Abraham didn't let her go because Sarah said so. Abraham didn't let her go because he was offended at her. Abraham had to first wait 
for the word of the Lord to come to him. The moment God spoke and said, let her go, he obeyed and God took care of Ishmael and, 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 and Hagar. So when God tells you, leave that place, you know you've heard the voice of God. Just obey as far as you have heard. Leave. The leaving, even if it's temporal. Now, you don't know if it's temporal or forever. You just know that God says, leave that place. It might bring the change that you desire. But you must be sure you've heard from the Lord. And whatever he tells you to do, do. if he tells you stay, then your staying is going to bring the healing. But let me tell you this and let this settle in your mind. Suffering, prolonged suffering, being maltreated, living without peace is not what God ever planned for your life. So don't accept it. No, 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 no. Don't accept it. Get someone to talk to. Get someone spiritual to. When I say spiritual, I'm not saying a pope or a bishop. Or, no, get someone spiritual. Someone who you know will align their mind with God's word. Someone who you know will seek the mind of the spirit concerning this. And so you guys can pray together. And the wisdom of God will be revealed to you. But you must, listen, listen, you must enjoy the peace that Jesus has given to you. It's yours for your living. It's yours for your enjoyment. And nothing should take it away from you. Praise God. Our time is up. Listen. I pray whatever situation you find yourself. I pray the wisdom of God be released to you right now. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I see a particular lady. You've been, you've been suffering in this marriage situation for so long. And there are many things that have happened. That even after it happened, your husband begged you not to tell anybody and you agreed and, and you agreed to, you're telling yourself for peace sake I'll keep it to heart listen the Lord is saying he is bringing so much comfort to your life and you begin to enjoy that comfort in 2023 but you need to get your husband to get the help that he needs and you've got to be bold about it. You know your husband needs help. He needs help. Don't be quiet about it. You've got to speak up so he will get the help that he requires. And you will get your own comfort. Thank you, Lord. I pray the Lord gives you strength. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is bringing healing to bodies, healing to sicknesses right now. And someone is being healed in the ear. Your right ear, actually your right ear, is being healed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed. And whatever sickness is in your body, I command it to go right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed in your body. Receive the peace of Jesus fully into your being. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That financial mess that you found yourself, and, and especially, I, I see someone, 2021, 2022 you got into some deep financial mess now it, it it started in 2021 and then you're trying to solve it but you got into deeper mess in 2022 they say the lord is restoring peace to you the lord is restoring peace to you in the name of the lord jesus receive it now in jesus name amen
God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.